Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Carlos Moncada, Director of Client Services at InfoReady. Thanks for taking the time to join us today for the Peer Spotlight webinar featuring our guest panelists from the University of Iowa, Cheryl Ridgway, and Brittany Ryan, who are in the Office of Vice President for Research there. Thank you, Carlos. Hi, I'm Britt Ryan, and today we're going to be discussing the nuts and bolts of managing an internal funding program. So we will go ahead and get started. Next slide, please. So the topics that we plan to cover today is just a brief introduction to who we are here at the University of Iowa. Um, we will be discussing our Arts and Humanities Initiative, or AHI as we refer to it as, and InfoReady Review. So we'll be discussing the past, present, and future of our process. And we'll also be just discussing the impact of InfoReady Review. Next slide, please. So this is just a photo of our campus here at the University of Iowa. Uh, we are in the middle of winter here, but our campus will look like this again soon enough. Next slide, please. So here at the University of Iowa, we are a member of the Big Ten, Big Ten Conference, uh, the Association of American Universities, and the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities. Uh, we are also an R1 public university with research funding in fiscal year 19, totaling to around $467 million. We are also home to one of the largest and most acclaimed medical centers in the country um, at University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. Um, we are also home to the highly respected and well-renowned Iowa Writers Workshop and also the Iowa Wave. Um, this was a tradition that was started in 2017 following the completion of our new Stud Family Children's Hospital that overlooks our Kinnick Stadium. Uh, so at the end of the first quarter at every Hawkeye football game, fans turn to face the Children's Hospital and wave to the patients and their families while they wave back. Next slide, please. Uh, so some of our Campus Info Ready review users include us here in the Office of Vice President for Research. They also include the Center for Health Effects and Environmental Contaminants, uh, the Carver College of Medicine, who is one of our heavy users of Info Ready review, uh, teaching and learning, and information technology services. I did make a note that on average we have around 50 open competitions. Uh, right now we currently have about 70 open competitions in Info Ready review. Next slide, please. So today's focus will be on AHI, or our Arts and Humanities Initiative and InfoReady Review. Uh, we'll be discussing what is AHI, our past, present, and future, and InfoReady Review impact. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to Cheryl to talk about our Arts and Humanities Initiative. Next slide, please. Thank you, Britt. Hello, everyone. So what is AHI? The Arts and Humanities Initiative is an internal funding program that supports humanities scholarship and work in the creative, visual, and performing arts. There are three support mechanisms within this program. The standard grant, which provides funding up to $7,500. The major project grant, um, with funding up to $30,000 and major conference grant, which provides funding up to $10,000. This is per project. There are two application cycles per year, one in the spring and one in the fall. We allow one submission per applicant as well as one resubmission per project. We typically receive 15 to 25 applications per cycle. And we fund anywhere in the neighborhood between 25 and 30 percent um, in any given cycle. Next slide. <clears throat> Our AHI application requirements include a narrative of no more than five pages in length addressing specific criteria, a budget, a budget template is provided in the application site, and line item descriptions, the amount requested, and justification of need are required um, in, within that template. We require a CV of up to four pages. Applicants are required to list in their CV all previous AHI awards held within the past three years, as well as brief outcomes. And supplemental materials, although are not required, um, our applicants are, are uh, able to use those uploads. They include an audio, visual, or digital file upload, a web link within the narrative, 
or one or two letters of support of one page each. Next slide. <clears throat> so this is uh, a, an overview of the AHI timeline, the spring cycle, so the one that we're currently in. And we start in December, uh, sometimes a little bit earlier than, than that. We prep and finalize our guidelines, the Office of the Vice President for Research website, the internal review application site, and we finalize our review panel. The competition is announced in early January through use of mass email to faculty and staff in the arts and humanities disciplines. The deans, directors, departmental executive officers, listserv. The program is posted on our OVPR website and in the newsletter. <clears throat> and it is added to the sponsored programs grant bulletin, which is available to all faculty and staff. And moving on in February, we schedule the review meeting. And I must say that the review meeting is usually, we try to schedule that earlier in January because calendars so quickly, but if not, we do finalize the review meeting. We also finalize the Info re, uh, Ready Review Reviewer site, and we send a reminder announcement later in February um, to faculty and staff. And I wanted to point out that one of the helpful functions in Info Ready Review is that the reviewer section within the site can be edited and updated after the competition is live and accepting applications. And then in March, early March, um, we have our submission deadline. And after the deadline, we review in Info Ready, Ready Review, um, we review the applications received to confirm applicant and project eligibility, as well as a quick check of the uploaded documents in page length compliance. A conflict of interest check is done with our reviewers, and we send an email usually with just listing the applicant names and the project titles to make sure that there's no conflict of interest existing before we assign applications. DEO endorsement requests are sent through InfoReady Review, and the DEOs or department chairs formally approve or do not approve the project and provide brief comments on behalf of their collegiate applicants, and the reviewers take this into account. Then it in April or May, depending on when we have the meeting schedule, we hold the review meeting. All the reviewers are present uh, in person. Scores and comments are due in InfoReady review 48 hours in advance of that meeting. This allows time for the administrator to capture the scores, enter them into a spreadsheet, and figure averages. Uh, then this document is used at the review meeting. Applications are discussed, of course, at the meeting and scores and comments updated if needed. After the review meeting, uh, award recommendations are sent to the Vice President for Research who confirms awards. Applications are marked in InfoRed Review as awarded or not. Notifications and comments are sent to all, application, all applicants. And a word about the uh, comments being sent, these are, are the review comments or critiques um, that uh, were, are formally written out. And they are all sent, but the reviewer names are removed. Those, are, those remain anonymous. As well, DEO comments are not shared. These are strictly confidential. And then finally, the post-award process, which is done outside of InfoReady Review. This process gathers information from the successful applicants uh, that we need to fund the award. Next slide. So we're gonna step into the past for just a little bit. According to our office archives, the Arts and Humanities program was first run in the mid 90s. At that time, there was no electronic application system. And as far as I could tell, it was all done by email, which was not ideal campus mail, and hand delivery. Each application was assigned to three reviewers, as it still is, which probably meant copying applications in triplicate and campus mailing to the reviewers. A homegrown electronic system was developed around 2003, and while this was a good system, it was somewhat limited. 
<clears throat> supplemental materials were not accepted through this site. Reviewers could access the application, but there was no dedicated section for comments and scores. These were instead entered into a form provided separately by the administrator and which had to be returned to the administrator again by email or campus mail. And this system eventually became technically unsustainable. Having pieces of the process in multiple places allowed more room for error. Often comments and scores were handwritten instead of typed. And as you can imagine, they were at times difficult to decipher. Needless to say, this was a time-consuming process and was environmentally harsh. Too much paper. Next slide. <clears throat> now back to the present. In one place, in InfoReady Review, we have for the applicant guidelines, budget forms, examples of successful budgets, and contact information. And for the administrators, all previous competitions are available. And this makes it easy to copy and update each new competition, no reinventing the wheel. And as you can see on this slide, the competition files are on the right, as I had just gone through. And the apply button is nice and clear. And then there's a description in the middle. Next slide. In one place, there is administrative access to submitted applications, draft applications, status of applications, scores and comments, and a lot more. And this slide shows the administrative view of submitted applications. And at the bottom of, of this particular slide, there I had to black out um, some of the, the title and one of the names. And this is just a partial view. Uh, but you can see that, that there is a title of the project, the applicant is shown, the status, whether it's assigned, reviewed, awarded, or not, when it was last updated. You can, it's very easy to see at one glance um, which DEOs have signed off on these applications and which have not, and then um, an average of scores. Uh, across the top, you'll see various tabs. And there is a review tab, which shows very nicely uh, all the reviewers, who they are assigned to, and their scores. So you can see it almost live, who's, who's doing what. Um, there is an award tab, which shows number of awards, total award, awarded and not awarded. And the post award shows the award information plus progress reports if submitted. It's all nice in one little one place. Next slide. Again, in one place, we have reviewer access to assigned applications, all applications, the DEO endorsements, guidelines and instructions, and the score and comments section. And this is the administrator review of, of the review section for the committee review. And on this, the, the committee has access to, under instructions from the administrator, again, the um, access to the guidelines, program guidelines, reviewer instructions, budget guidelines, and a tip. And right below, you'll see project description. This is just one out of seven of the criteria that, that they critique. And it's got a brief description on how to score. and um, the, they can add their comments within the field there and then rate that particular section from 1 to 10. They can also set reminders on the right-hand side so they can remind themselves, and they do, uh, when they need to get this done. And they can also view all applications, not just the ones that they're assigned to. The view other reviewers right now would be the DEOs. We don't actually make all the other reviewers um, available through this tab. Next slide. So in one place, multiple review steps. Our process uh, includes a two-step review. Uh, the DEO and the committee, which I've talked about before, although this system allows for as many as is required with your competition. So with the DEO endorsement, um, 
An email is sent from InfoReady Review, Info Review with instructions and a link to the form. And this view shows the administrator view of the endorsement form. And again, as, as for the committee reviews, they have instructions available. They are able to approve or approve with reservation or not approve, which we don't get very many of those at all. And then they provide comments to the reviewers. And the application files are to the right. And they can also set reminders and look at program details. Next slide. So a little bit about our reviewers. <clears throat> we have uh, nine member review panels. And these are made up of three to four art scholars and five to six humanities scholars. They're recruited from previous AHI awardees, um, from DEO or chair, department chair recommendations, and ad hoc. And terms of service generally run up to three years. Next slide, and Britt. Thank you, Cheryl. So now I'm going to take it over and discuss our future state uh, with our process and InfoReady review. So right now, this is a work in progress for us. Uh, we are exploring the option of automated progress reports. Um, currently, our progress reports are in Qualtrics. Uh, so what we do with that is we'll send an email to the awardees with a link into Qualtrics for them to submit their progress reports. We then download and save those reports onto our shared drive. Uh, so with InfoReady Review, we could have the progress record, reports attached to the applications. The documentation would be all in one place, and it would be convenient. Uh, we would also like to explore the option of making InfoReady Review more campus-wide and share it with additional departments and schools here at the university. Next slide. Uh, so the InfoReady Review impact um, eases the load uh, for everybody. So for staff, uh, the application materials are in one location and easily downloaded. Uh, we can view draft applications and activity. Uh, the reviewer comments and scores are all in one place for us to view. Uh, we have the ability to copy previous competitions for new cycles. So we don't have to create new competitions from scratch. We can just copy them over and reuse some of that information. And we also have a notes functionality within individual applications so that we can take notes regarding each application and go back and review them. So for the applicant, all competition materials are in one place. The application form is brief and simple to use. And uploading documentation is easy and a variety of formats are allowed. For the reviewer, automated review process, scores and comments section are in one place, the application materials are also in one place, and competition guidelines and other instructions are in one place. Uh, so as you can see, the common theme here is that everything is all in one place. Administratively, it makes our lives as well as everyone else's just a little bit easier. And next slide. So this is our contact information. Uh, please feel free to reach out to Cheryl or myself if you have any follow-up questions for us following the webinar. Thank you so much, Cheryl and Britt, uh, for sharing all of that great information about how you're managing the AHI program and in infrared review. Um, so I'm going to leave the, their contact details displayed on here on the screen. Uh, that way you have time to, to copy that down. We also received uh, questions uh, both before and during the webinar. So let's dive into Q&A. Um, <clears throat> Cheryl, Britt, are you ready? Yeah. Yep. All right. So first question is, uh, who makes the final award decisions and how are you entering that into InfoReady? Okay, I can take this one. It's Cheryl. Um, final award decisions, again, once, once the review panel um, gives the award recommendations and scores are, are, are clear, it provides kind of a ranking, and our, these are submitted to the Vice President for Research who um, confirms uh, which awards 
are are going to be given for that particular cycle. And we enter these in InfoReady review. We can go into the each application and we can either award or reject. And we award them at this time and put down um, how how much funding they've received for that particular cycle. And basically that's all we do as far as tracking those awards. It's pretty easy. And we have a, a couple more related questions to that. Uh, so one submitted question was, um, what happened in the committee review meeting? Are scores collected at that time? Uh, how, what's the mechanism for making the suggestion to the, to the VCR? So scores are due uh, 48 hours in advance of the review meeting, um, overall scores for each applicant, and those are put into a spreadsheet. And, and as I said before, um, three reviewers are assigned to each application. So those three reviews, are, are, or three scores rather, are averaged. And based on the average of each of the scores, um, we rank them from highest score to lowest score. And um, those can be changed during the meeting based on the review discussion. Each application is, um, is discussed during the re review meeting. Some people may have different insight into some of these applications that would um, would convince another reviewer to change their score, either up or down. And then these these scores are recalculated after the review meeting, and we go through the highest scores and um, draw a funding line, it's, and then give those to the vice president for research. So I hope that answered the question. Thanks. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, this one is, is related to scoring as well, but this, this relates to consistency across competition. Um, so, so, quote, I am curious if you use the same review uh, score criteria for all of your internal competitions or if you change the scores depending on the competition. If you change them, uh, does that create any issues for you to compare across competitions? For this particular program, internal funding program, we don't change the scoring or the criteria. Um, so that's, that's really not an issue for us. And for some of the other funding programs, um, we've had a few periodically. And um, generally, those, generally the, the competitions stay the same throughout the year. Did that answer the question? I, you know, it, it, it seems like it was uh, across multiple types of competitions. So is the scoring the same across multiple types of competitions uh, as well? Yeah. I would have to say no in that case because if, if we have – in in our office, they stay the same because we're running the same internal funding program. But um, through other competitions, say through the College of Medicine or elsewhere, those change. So each competition is different in that case. Thank you. Now we have a couple of progress report questions as well. Uh, so one question is, uh, why have you not used infrared review for progress reports in the past? Uh, we have used Qualtrics for the past many years, and I think it was just more a matter of getting ourselves together in infrared review, uh, submitting, you know, posting competitions, getting ourselves familiar, familiarized with everything that we could do, and we just actually haven't done it yet. But that's on our work in progress list, and we plan to use that going forward pretty soon. I like the sound of that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> moving, on to an, moving on to uh, another progress report question. Um, quote, can you elaborate on how you use Qualtrics 
with infrared review? Um, we don't use it with InfoReady review per se. Uh, we send progress reports outside of the InfoReady review system, and we send a link to Qualtrics. Um, then there's a form, of course, within Qualtrics, a survey, if you will, which the applicants, the awardees, fill out when it's due, and then we download that um, into the shared drive. And track them that way, but we don't we don't combine them in infrared review at this time. And here's one more progress report question: Can awardees submit more than one progress report, and if so, can they see the responses to previous progress reports? Uh, I'll let you handle that from a Qualtrics perspective, and then I can answer that from an infrared review perspective since you haven't used that in the system yet. So I want to be clear about that question. This is multiple progress reports, is that right, from one applicant? Yes, yeah, I, I, I think it might be one of those, like, uh, you know, you have a one uh, six-month report and then a final report. I think that's, that's probably the context. Okay. Okay, we have a final report. We don't we don't have six months progress reports. We have a final report. I should have clarified that. So those are due about six months after the end of the project period, which runs for twelve months from the award date. So it's about a year and a half. And then then we have a prog or final report due. And, and then I, I'll answer the the, the other side of that. In infrared review, you can have multiple progress reports uh, assigned to uh, an individual authority. Um, so you'd be able to, the system allows you to create multiple forms and assign them with, with separate deadlines. So if it were more of a longitudinal type of progress report over several years, you'd be able to set that up in the system and, it, and, and set the reminders and deadlines in advance. Moving on to some other questions. Um, this one was submitted during registration. What's been your experience with collecting budget proposals? Okay, so collecting budget proposals within within the internal funding. Again, we have a budget template where we have everything. We have the guidelines embedded in there, and uh, we have a template listing exactly what we what might be needed you know we have a section for supplies or for personnel or travel things like that and um, we require that template to be used and then uploaded back into the system so there's there's no problem um, re receiving these budgets And um, related topic on collecting information from applicants. Uh, how do you choose to make something a, a field in the form versus a file upload? How do we choose to make a field in the form? Yeah, well, I think this is process related. Why, why do you decide to have collect something uh, like create a field in infrared review to collect the information instead of making it a file upload where they upload that document. Oh, I see. For for example, in ours, if this if I'm getting this correctly, we ask for a justification. It's like a brief abstract of the proposal, and the applicants write that into a a field, um, if you will, within the form. It's um, it's a good way once everything is is um, collected together, we can turn that entire application into a PDF, and then we can see all the general details. We can see an abstract right there. Um, it's it's just a convenient way, I think, to collect information, and we cut down on file uploads in part that way as well. 
but I guess I have no really good answer for that. Uh, it's just the way that we like to set things up and it's helpful, I think, to the applicant as well. Thanks for sharing that, Cheryl. Um, we've got another practice report question for you. Uh -oh. uh, uh, quote, do you see that InfraReady functionality will be limited for the progress reports compared to the functionality in Qualtrics? We do not at this point. I think actually it will help streamline things. Uh, the functionality in Qualtrics, um, you know, as far as the form, it's it can be fairly robust and I don't see any reason why the same thing um, wouldn't be true for InfoReady review. Plus, again, as Britt had said earlier, it's all in it's all in one place. We can it's attached, if if you will, to each applicant, and the one in Qualtrics is not at this point to the application materials. Thanks, Cheryl. I'm I'm assuming more progress report questions will pop up here and there. Uh, so we'll get to those when they do. The next question is, is related to integration with other tools. Uh, so, quote, do you take advantage of Caillou's compatibility for routing? If so, how has your experience been? We don't use um, routing, I assume this has to do with the award or sending things, uh, sending to budget officers or things like that. So we don't use routing with, within this, if that, if I'm, if I'm understanding that question. Yeah, if, if that person could um, care to follow up. Uh, with, uh more information would might be helpful. Uh, we'll go on to the next question. So you're, you're going to have to go back to your uh, memory on this, Cheryl and Britt. Quote, how long did it take you to set up the first competition? <laughs> the first competition? You are picking our brains. Um, it didn't the the application part of this i i think once once you build that out in draft you you know what questions you want to ask um what which materials you want to receive within the application site once you have that the the actual building of the form went fairly quickly i don't have a, a time of course a um, frame as to how long that took but it just it, it's a fairly easy uh, system to use, so it didn't take a lot of time. I think after that, once you get the form in there, um, the testing and making <clears throat> making sure that the information that you put in there is accurate takes more time by far than actually putting it into the system and making sure that um, the details are correct, and that really doesn't have anything to do with the system. It has more to do with your quality control. So the system itself was easy. So there's a follow-up question to that. How long have you been using it already? We've been using it just starting on our third year. Uh, I, I remember when we first spoke, when we first met. <laughs> I um, do. Now you have me waxing poetically here. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Uh, so so uh, before I embarrass myself, let's go on to the next question. Uh, this relates to the DEO endorsement. So, quote, is the DEO endorsement a applicant-driven routing step? If so, do you have issues with applicants entering the wrong email address uh, of the DEO? 
No, that's a good question. It is not applicant driven. Um, the, we have the applicant enter the name of their DEO and the email into the system, but we always double check this. And uh, then we send through InfoReady review, we send an automatic email with links to the information, instructions, everything they would need. And sometimes, especially when the system was a lot newer for all of us, I would send the DEOs a, an email saying, heads up, expect this. This is what's coming, an applicant from your college or department um, will need an endorsement. So they knew it was coming. So uh, to, to, to clarify, uh, you have a field in the application form where, where you have the applicants identify the DEO information, and then Correct. you assign you assign them to a route, the DEO to a routing step. Correct. Yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, yes, yeah, thanks for the clarification. Make that clear. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was a follow up to that as well that just came in. Why why not use the uh, the self-driven routing, the applicant-driven routing? Um, we we like to keep the DEO and endorsement separate from what the applicant does, basically. Um, I'm not sure how the self-driven routing form works, to tell you the truth, um, but all DEO endorsements are confidential. That we encourage the applicants to tell their DEO that they're going to be applying for one of these awards. Um, they should know anyway. And um, but we handle everything so that the DEO everything can remain completely confidential. Thanks for sharing that. The the uh, and here, here's a related question to collecting reviewer feedback and scores. Um, are you download, downloading the score spreadsheet via InfoReady Review? Um, downloading the score spreadsheet? No. Um, what I do, I, I set up a an Excel spreadsheet and and take the scores, take the overall score from the from the review, you know, the applicant's review, and just pop it into the spreadsheet. But I'm not downloading anything yet, as far as that goes. We we have a question for Britt. Britt, on your bullet point notes function within individual application, uh, mm -hmm. quote, she takes notes on each application in InfoReady while at the committee meeting. So so are you taking notes on, app, on applications during the committee meeting? Not necessarily during the committee meeting. Uh, we generally use this function as notes for ourselves. Um, so if there's something we need to make note of regarding this application, maybe after the fact or something along the way, we're able to go in to that application and make a note of it. Um, that way, if we ever need to reference that information in the future, um, then we have that information easily accessible to us. Thanks for sharing that, Britt. Um, sure. The, uh, those, those notes can come in handy, uh, especially when there's multiple administrators involved. So everyone can yes, definitely agreed. Yeah, on the same page. Uh, so here is a progress report question. It's actually a follow-up to something I missed. Um, so before, when I was talking about the progress report functionality in InfoReady, I didn't answer part two. Uh, so the second part of the question was, can an awardee see their previously submitted progress reports. Um, so, you know, if, if there were multiple reports in a competition. Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, an awardee can see 
uh, the progress reports they previously submitted uh, to the competition if there's multiple forms that are requested. Uh, they can also see progress reports they submitted to other competitions as well. And that sounds quite helpful. Yeah. I just had to finish answering that one. Uh, here is a question about data uh, and quality control. So, quote, how do you do quality control of your data in InfoReady? So, quality control of our data. Uh, which which data would that be? Um, I'm not uh, sure what let, that means. Let, let's, let's ask for uh, some clarity. Um, the person who submitted that question, could, could you elaborate, please? And, and we'll ask, uh, follow up with a different question here uh, while, while you write that out. Um, here's one. What are your best practices for announcing competitions? Um, I, I think this is probably what what have you found to be most effective when uh, you announce the, the competitions to your faculty and researchers? Could you repeat the last part of that question that you just asked, Carlos? Uh, yes. Uh, what methods have you found most effective when uh, announcing competitions to your faculty and researchers? We've found that targeted uh, mass emails quite helpful. What we do here at the University of Iowa is we can run um, university IDs for specific groups of people. In this case, it would be arts and humanities faculty and staff. And then we can send an a, a mass email um, just to those people, and that's been quite helpful. And we also send a, a reminder, follow-up reminder, which is very helpful as well. We do other things as well, but that, that one is a big one, it seems. We, we do get a lot of um, response to that. Uh, I just want to share one thing that I've been hearing more lately. Um, there's, I've, I've had a few institutions in the last couple months start using uh, marketing automation tools such as MailChimp. Uh, so that mm -hmm. they, they can uh, work on the design and, and keep track of uh, engagement with the emails. That's just sharing what, what I've picked up through conversation. Yeah, there are uh, other forms so of email too, I think. I'm sorry, Carlos. No, no, go ahead. Oh, other forms of email, such as dispatch or campaign monitor and the MailChimp, as you said, they're all very good. Um, here's another question, and this relates to sharing funding information with accounting. So how, how do you do that? Is it automatic or well, what's your process? We share that. that. That's all done by email or phone. Um, we set that up outside of InfoVet Ready Review because there are a lot of steps that we have to go through to get um, funding set up for the for the awardee. So we, as I said, we we email or we contact the budget officers in the various departments and um, tell them tell them about the award. And we have a form actually for them to fill out. It's an MFK form. They give us information, departmental budget information. We fill out the rest, and it all just kind of magically comes together. So we do it outside the InfoReady review. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, if anyone's interested, we do have some institutions that use data feeds from the system uh, to their internal repositories for that kind of stuff. Uh, so next question, uh, can you talk through how it works in InfraReady for the entire review committee to be able to see and review 
all the applications, as opposed to just reviewing the ones they are assigned to? Is it through a routing so, step? So if I'm getting that correctly, why do we allow uh, to viewer, you know, reviewers to see all applications instead of just the assigned ones? I think a lot of the reviewers find that helpful in as they're um, critiquing their assigned reviews to be able to see everyone that has submitted an application and what's what's being submitted, what's out there. And also in the review meeting, we um, we have the assigned reviewers start by um, giving their critiques. And by the way, we have three reviewers per application, as I said, and they each have equal weight. So one reviewer will start giving comments, scores, and the other two will follow up with other comments. And then the entire review panel is uh, it's opened up for comments. So if they are able to see all of the applications, that's quite helpful because the, as I said, the entire review panel does discuss this if need be. And then um, to, to get into the weeds a little bit, everyone assigns a score whether, whether they've reviewed it or not. So it's quite helpful to see the application, of course. Thanks for sharing. And there's a follow-up question to that, um, asking uh, about how it's done in the system technically. So I, I can take that. Um, so in InfraReady Review, you can uh, assign all of the applications under consideration to all of the reviewers on the committee. So that's one way. Uh, another way is you can assign the reviewers to um, you know, a, a subset of the applications, uh, but, but each routing step has the option for you to provide the reviewers access to the other applications. They would just have read-only access where they don't enter in comments on those others that are not assigned to them. A third way uh, for reviewers to gain, on the committee to gain access to the applications is by using one of the routing step types uh, that's called uh, the committee routing steps. And so the committee routing steps actually don't require the reviewers to log into the system, uh, but they're designed to allow a default reviewer to collect uh, the consensus decision from the committee members and enter that into the system. Prior to the committee meeting, that default reviewer is able to email what we call the committee packet to the committee members. So the, the default reviewer will go into the system click a button, send, and we'll, and we'll enter in the email address of, of the uh, committee members. And, and that committee packet contains a cover sheet of the applications under consideration, a table of contents, and then all the individual application packets. Uh, so that, that's application form, file uploads, reference letters if there are any, and any past reviews as well. Uh, here's another question about reviewers. Are do you have any paid reviewers? Um, easy, easy answer. No, we don't. All our all our reviewers are. This is a service um, for them to do. You know, for the University of Iowa, actually for our office. And unfortunately, we can't we can't pay our reviewers. We do try to give them treats, so. <laughs> Sweets are always so compelling. Yes. <laughs> uh, here's a, another question about reviewers and conflict of interest. So how do you manage reviewer conflict of interest before assigning reviewers to be reviewers? What we do in with conflict of interest, I send an email out to um, all of our reviewers, and with the it's um, the title of the project, the name of the applicant, and the department actually, and also a link to we have an online um, conflict of interest guidelines, and we ask them there are just just one, two, three, four. 
points here that they should take into consideration with each application. Uh, for example, was the principal investigator or project director or collaborator a student of the reviewers in the last five years, uh, as an example? And there are a few others listed here. And if they can say no to each one of those things, they don't have a conflict. If they can say yes, we mark it as a conflict, conflict and that application is not assigned to them. And, and during the review meeting, uh, we ask that anyone with a conflict, once the application is up for discussion, if they would leave the room. And then discussion is held uh, without, without them present. So that's that's just the, the easiest way I have found over the years is to email our reviewers in advance of assignments. It saves a lot of time. Thanks, Cheryl. And and you know something else that happens with assessing DOI uh, is IRB. Uh, so that's what this next question is. Um, quote, do, you, do any of the projects get routed through an IRB process for approval prior to issue of awarded funds? Uh, yes, they do. We have a post-award form that the awardees fill out, and on that uh, is, is compliance information, uh, compliance questions that you're all, I'm sure, very familiar with, but one of them is human subjects. Um, it, it could be export control, uh, things like that. And if they say yes to any of these questions, then an, um, an automatic email is sent to the appropriate person to follow up on that. And funds are not released until we have the appropriate um, IRB number, for example, or sign off that we need. And again, this is done outside of InfoReady review uh, at this point. And I'm not sure even if this can be done, can it, Carlos, can that be done through the system? Like a form and then have uh, it be routed. Yeah, you, you could you could create a routing step. Um, I would recommend using the build my own form step type. And then you'd be able to build a form with however you needed to and, and assign it to the appropriate uh, reviewers that would provide the IRB information. Okay. Um, so th there was actually a follow-up question asking if you use a routing step. So uh, for that, for the, for the person who asked that, the answer is presently no. Uh, here is here are a couple questions that are completely off topic from what we have been discussing, but it relates to one of your slides on your presentation. Uh, how closely do you work with the other units you listed that use InfoReady? Well, I don't know how to answer that. Um, certainly, Brett, you can speak to limited submissions, but um, Actually, that's not even part of that question. We work we work closely enough. We're in touch with a lot of the administrators in all of these, especially the College of Medicine at this point. And we do go back and forth occasionally if we have questions about uh, the system and that. But as far as competitions, those are all separate. We, we don't really get into each other's competitions. It's not necessary at this point. So I hope that answered your question. Not sure if it did, but let me know. Uh, well, I, I hope it did too. We'll, we'll see. Um, and there was, there was another question about this. Um, how do those other units share in the cost of InfraReady with you? We that one I would I'm not able to specifically answer, but they but we all do um, contribute to the cost of info red review, and I believe it's based somewhat on how much it's used. Um, maybe 
for example, the College of Medicine is pretty big, and they use it more often than, say, I think teaching and learning is on there, which is a small department. So College of Medicine puts in more. It, it, that one, again, I don't have the specifics for that. Thanks for, for sharing what you could. could. Uh, yeah. so the rest of that was, quote, that has been a sensitive topic with us. We don't want to show a little full cost for everyone on campus. So, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Here are a couple more questions. Uh, and I know we're running low on time here. One last question. Do you have a main person who oversees Infrared and acts as a contact if other schools within the university have questions? If so, what department are they in? Um, I think that would be um, ITS. Uh, Jose Jimenez is, is one of our main contacts for uh, Infrared, and I, I think, Carlos, you have you probably know him through email and et cetera, probably phone calls. But he would be the overall, I think, for certain questions. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's any main contact. Uh, we all help each other if need be. We can reach out to each other. Uh, did that help? Um, we'll, we'll, did that help? Yes, thanks. Um, so to, to summarize that, it, it sounds like uh, you really have almost like a, a loose campus user group or community of practice on campus. Correct. Yep. Correct. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I, I've heard of those popping up as well. Um, so actually, one thing we're trying to figure out is how to help facilitate that or, or get it started. Because uh, we, we've had other institutions ask us how, you know, how to best get people together and sharing information so you can, you know, rely on each other. So, right, and we've uh, you might hear more with, from, from us about that. Right, we've gotten together with other departments before it's, it's been some time, but to introduce them to InfoReady and show them some of the um, ins and outs of it, but that's, yeah, it's, we don't have a formal group. All right, well, we've, thanks so much, Cheryl and Britt. We've, we've reached the end of the hour. We have some other questions. We'll, we'll address those uh, offline. Um, thank you, everyone, for your time, and, and special thanks to our presenters. Uh, the webinar was recorded. Uh, I mentioned an unedited version will be emailed later today, and the edited version will be posted on the website uh, next week. Um, so something else to keep in mind is that the next Peer Spotlight webinar is uh, Tuesday, February 25th at 1 p.m with Saginaw Valley State University. They're going to be talking about how they use InfraReady Review for academic and student affairs. So that will be uh, pretty pretty unique uh, if you're you know in, in research. Um, you'll be able to see how, how other offices are using the system. Uh, lastly there is a post webinar survey if you're able to fill out we would love for you to and uh, if you have any questions for us, contact information is on screen. Uh, 